Welcome to Meet the Candidate with your host, Sulani Madsen. Meet the Candidate is your opportunity to see local candidates and hear about the experiences that have shaped their lives. Meet the Candidate is a nonpartisan community project brought to you by your friends at the Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, North by Northwest Digital, We Believe We Vote, and the McGarry Law Office, the landlord's attorney. Now, here's Sulani. Well, welcome to this edition of Meet the Candidate, and my guest is uh, Lloyd Woods, who is a candidate for Spokane Valley City Council, uh, position five. Welcome, Lloyd. Well, thank you. I'm glad you invited me here. Uh, it's kind of exciting. Yeah, so your name's going to appear on the ballot, I believe. It's going to say Dr. Ingemar, and then in parentheses, Lloyd Woods. No, um, it, uh, it will say Ingemar Lloyd Woods, Ingemar and, Lloyd. and it'll have the parentheses on the Lloyd, okay. because it's, it's my middle name, but half the people call me that. Yeah, everybody has a has a story about their name. <laughs> That's right. So okay, so I'm glad you could make it, Lloyd. And uh, if we just start with a real simple question, which is, tell me about where you grew up. Well, I uh, I I grew up uh, a child of migrant farm laborers. I was uh, born in uh, Richland Housing Labor Camp in California, mm-hmm. and we traveled from uh, Central California to Washington to pick fruit and grapes and olives, all types of things. So uh, I never lived in a regular house until I was about four. My oh. father had in, had a small inheritance from his grandmother. So I got to finally move in a house then in a community. And uh, so we lived that way for a long, long time. We still picked fruit and mm-hmm. it was migrant farm laborers, even though we had the house for You weren't a while. migrating anymore, but you were still picking Right. Fruit. Well, we ended up losing the house uh, mm. uh, by, uh, I guess, a mortgage default uh, by, uh, I guess, in 1971. So then we moved into very bad neighborhoods because of low mm-hmm. income. My parents were uh, uneducated and uh, so their earnings were not very high. Mm-hmm. And, uh, a lot of issues was going on at that time. So, okay, so there's lots of things to learn from that. Yes. A different, a different background that you bring to yes. the table. Yes, and then I uh, grew up and uh, ended up becoming a alcoholic and a drug addict, and ended up going to jail. And uh, mm-hmm. about 14 years ago, I become a Christian and knew that I had to change my life. And and uh, from that point on, I says I'm going to serve the community and mm-hmm. and. Uh, do what I can to make amends for my past life. And uh, so I ended up going to seminary because I thought that I was called to be a a preacher. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't. So I knew that my calling was uh, education, uh, Christian education. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting a Master of Arts in in Theological Studies. Where where did you study? Uh, Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary Mm -hmm. in Lynchburg. And then I uh, finished a Master of uh, Religious Education, and then I, uh, at that time, started volunteering for a Christian university that was seeking accreditation, and they needed a compliance officer and someone trained in uh, education. And mm-hmm. so I went in and uh, went and got an education specialist degree, which is a post-master's degree, and got that and led that university to accreditation and uh, took a job with the Amrica Development Corporation for a fairly small salary and continued to uh, volunteer for years. And then uh, I got a job as a compliance officer and, a vice, and promoted to vice president of uh, institutional research and assessment for a, a for-profit school uh, out of Great Falls, Montana called Apollos University and finished a doctor of business administration with them last year. You have just an amazing arc of your life story, yeah. of all that you've experienced and uh, what you've overcome. That's, well, that's pretty amazing. Most of it's self-imposed, put it that way. Well, but, yeah. But sometimes those, that's something I wanted to bring up, that uh, you can rehabilitate yourself and mm-hmm. you can climb above those issues, you know, self-imposed barriers and also mm-hmm. being born into some quite some mm-hmm. heavy barriers to overcome. But uh, excuse me, <clears throat> it can be done, and and that's that's what I dedicate my life to is uh, higher education, and I, I I think that a large portion of people that are lawbreakers and and uh, drug addicts can can be rehabilitated. There's a section that never will be, mm-hmm. um, but uh, for the most part. Well, so what brought you to Spokane Valley? Well, I, uh, I me and my first wife moved to. Uh, 
Stevens County in 1981. I went up there to work in the logging industry. Mm -hmm. And as you know, at that point, the uh, logging industry is dying up there and throughout the right. state. So uh, I lived there for quite a while, owned five acres land, and uh, we had a tragedy. My our, our trailer house caught on fire. My daughter got burnt, critically burnt, and I had to do CPR on her, and the marriage didn't last with that with that incident in her did life. You, did your daughter survive? She survived, but she was uh, critically burnt and uh, had surgeries all the way until mm. she was 20 years old. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of times marriages don't uh, survive tragedy tragedies yes, like that. Exactly. And uh, I, I had a, I had to have a defibrillator implanted uh, tw 11 years ago. So it was better for me to move to Spokane Valley, and mm -hmm. and me and my second wife moved to Spokane Valley. We've been here about 10 years, except that I, with my jobs, I flew to Nashville, Tennessee, or to all over the United States because I was their mm -hmm. compliance officer, and I'd have to attend the accreditation conferences and so forth. But so I couldn't involve myself in the community here because sometimes I was gone for 45 days, 60 days. Sure. And if you're working a contract out of town, it yes. makes it hard to be yes. involved in the community. Yes. So the job I have now, I only work about 20 hours a week uh, with them online and fly to uh, or drive to Great Falls, Montana a couple times a year now. So, because I don't work for Nations University anymore, the one that, that okay. I led to accreditation. It was just... Okay, so that... Uh, so you now you have time. Besides yeah. just having time, what led you to decide to to accept a call to public service? Well, I started. You know, I I paid attention to my community, and I seen a lot of uh, the. Uh, uh, tension involved in the politics in Spokane Valley with some of the former city councilmen uh, uh, resigning. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that, uh, personally, I feel that the uh, current city council just didn't dedica dedicate enough time or energy to the social causes, the social issues that our city faces. Uh, they've done very well in certain other areas, but I don't think that we can forget about one section, a very large section, probably 20% mm -hmm. of our population or 18%. Uh, they, it seems like the, the poor and the lower middle class just doesn't have a, re a real voice and advocate on the city council. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would like to be. And uh, I would uh, love to be able to get on the city council and, and be a liaison with a lot of the uh, uh, nonprofits and see if we can get some help with social programs there and also look for grants for the city to utilize uh, for social programs. Okay, so you were looking at the council and felt that your background would give some balance and yes. that was that was the draw to public yes. service. Yes. Okay. Um, sometimes I ask people about this question. You've had such a varied um, background. I'm not sure where, where this is going to go. I suspect yeah. the answer is going to be that you were picking fruit, but I often ask, what was the first job, the first time somebody connected work and, and money, and what did you learn from that? Oh, okay. Well, I, as you know, I worked probably, I started babysitting, picking leaves out of the stuff as a child for my family, but my Cleaning first the job out of, what was right, out of the fruit the, yeah, okay. was for the Sonic Drive-In. And oh. yeah, and that was when uh, people that was 12 or 13 in the state, we'd lived in Oklahoma for a couple of years, and uh, the children could get paid half the minimum wage at that time. Mm -hmm. So that was really a great experience because I learned to interact with people because I delivered food to the cars. Okay. Yeah, so it was like a bellhop. Or, well, I don't know what car they hop, call it. Car hop, excuse yeah, me. Car hop. Yeah. We don't have those anymore, but yeah, <laughs> right. I, I, I do remember them. Right. So you really, you learn customer service. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot of things on that job, yeah. I, sometimes I worry that we don't give uh, give kids enough opportunities to get yeah. learn those lessons yeah. early. Um, yeah. It's kind of hard to make them wait until they're 18 and then learn them. That's right. They should learn, uh, be able to work at 13 and 14 like we did then. Yeah, and find something. Yeah. So um, you've traveled a lot with your work. Is there yeah. some travel experiences that you feel have, have really given you some insights that you'd like to bring back to your hometown? Well, I, I think even though Hawaii, I had to go there for a conference. and, and People don't usually say I had to go to Hawaii. <laughs> well, I, I w really didn't want to go <laughs> at that time. I was kind of uh, doing other things, but I had to go. And uh, it, even though it's part of the United States, it was just different to mm -hmm. me. And uh, I got to just meet different people on the streets when I would 
go to the conference. I'd walk sometimes just to meet the people. And it was just a big difference to me. And also, I, I think that uh, when I, I drove to Nashville once for my job, instead mm -hmm. of flying, mm -hmm. and I got to go through the, the uh, rust belt. Uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, Ohio and, and, and uh, went through Michigan and so forth. And I've seen the devastation of, of the communities that the people, the, that the outsourcing had done. Mm -hmm. The auto industry and there was like a Frigidaire big plant in this one town. I don't remember what town it was. And there's I, I, literally probably one third the houses are not occupied mm -hmm. there. And uh, these Big air, industrial areas just rusting away, and so that was that really woke me up to the mm. damage that outsourcing has done, mm -hmm. the, the jobs leaving America. It's devastated a lot of those communities over there. In that's that that's a really interesting insight. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've I've gotten the signal that we're down to that last minute, and I'll ask okay. you the the closing question, which is please tell people why they should vote for uh, Lloyd Woods for Spokane Valley City Council position five. Well, I I think that you know I, I'm I'm a very controversial candidate. But I also think that my track record the last 13 years, the dedication I put into going to graduate school for seven years and working anywhere from 20 to 60 hours a week in mm -hmm. addition to going to school and the experience I have as a compliance officer and uh, negotiating with government agencies mm -hmm. and uh, and surprisingly, my past experience does help me to be able to understand the problems that people do have. Mm -hmm. and. And I think that uh, positions me very good to be a very good addition to the uh, city council. And uh, hopefully the voters know that and will trust me and, and give me an opportunity to serve my community. And, and this okay. election is not the last for me. I mean, I'm going to volunteer for other things in the community. So, Well, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're home more now and you can do that volunteering. Yes. And uh, thank you for coming in. And, and thank you good very luck much, on your campaign. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching Meet the Candidate. Spokane Talks Online thanks our community-minded partners at Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, North by Northwest Digital, We Believe, We Vote, and the McGarry Law Office, the Landlord's Attorney, for helping make Meet the Candidate possible.